Hi, I'm Susan Lewis from WRTI, and this is I'm in with Sarah Chang and I think her dog. I know exactly. Hi, Susan. Hi, Sarah. Good to see you. I'm so happy to see you. Oh, it's great to see you. Wow. Um, this is a strange time we're living in right now. Oh, exactly. I know. I, I can't believe it's been so long since I saw you. And the last time I saw you, we were walking our dogs on the trail together. I know, and my dog is sitting <laughs> over in the corner, and your dog is somewhere in that room. I hear her. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> wow. So what, when this all transpired, when you first learned about the stay-at-home recommendation, where were you and what were you doing? So I was actually in New York because I was on my way to JFK. I had a three-week tour of Europe. Um, I, I was supposed to be on, and it, uh, it had Germany, Switzerland, France, et cetera, et cetera. And one by one, all those countries started canceling. Um, and I, I spent two days in my New York apartment, you know, trying, just waiting for that call, saying either, okay, get on the next flight out, or everything's canceled, you know? So after two days, I decided to come home to Philadelphia, where my family is, and just ride this out. And, you know, it's it's... Oh, I can't believe it's already been, you know, two months, over two months. Wow. Well, how has it affected your, your life? Because you're not usually home much. I am never home this much. I, I haven't had this much time off. Off. It's not really off. It's a forced, <laughs> forced sheltered place. But I haven't had this much time off um, since I was eight. You know, I started my career professionally when I was eight. And from then, it's just been go, go, go. And... I mean, even if um, there was one time when I was, I think, 17 or 18, when I was a little tired and I asked for a sabbatical and I ended up getting two months, you know, that, that was my big sabbatical. So this right now officially is the longest amount of time I've ever had off. And, you know, it's, it's so tragic and it's so sad and it's unbelievable how many lives have been lost and it, it's just so heartbreaking. Um, but on the other side, you know, it's forced all this family time um, that we normally wouldn't have. And in my case, I, uh, I was never around growing up. You know, I missed so many birthdays and monumental milestones in everyone's lives, just being on the road all the time. And in a way, anyway, it's, it's a terrible reason for this to have happened. But in a way, it has brought the family, you know, closer together and, you know, given us a lot of time to sort of catch up. Right. Who all's home? So my brother, um, who works in New York is, is in my Philadelphia home, um, which I love because he's like my best friend. Uh, my dog Chewy is home and he's the best thing ever. Chewy is the most popular family member. Um, because every 10 minutes, somebody's yelling for Chewy. It's like, Chewy, come upstairs. Chewy, go downstairs because everybody wants to cuddle with him. So he is by far the most, most popular. Um, and my mom is also here. So it's, it's a lot. There are days when, you know, we all have to sort of retreat into our separate wings because being with the same people 24 seven all day, every day is not necessarily the healthiest thing all the time, <laughs> but, but I'm so grateful that they're here with me because, um, it, I mean, I can't even imagine going through something like this without family surrounding you. Uh, speaking of Chewy, we can hear him. Can you show us? Yeah, sure. So this is Chewy. This is my little baby. <laughs> little. He's like 45 pounds. But here, here you go, Chewy. What a beautiful dog. <laughs> well, we've, we've done dog walks together, like Chewy and Nelly together, and they're they're great together. They're good friends. I know. <laughs> <laughs> No, but he's, he's fantastic. It's been great having um, a routine you know, with him because even if I have taken him on dog walks before, we never had this sort of routine where we would spend two hours on the trail every day, which is what we do, you know, just walking and exploring. And, you know, it's just, it's good for not just our bonding, but just, you know, for the mind and the you know, just to clear our heads and our hearts and our mind right now when all of this is going on. Right. What were, what concerts were you scheduled to play that you um, 
So I was, I had um, a bunch of Brahms concertos <laughs> that I was supposed to do in March. I had uh, a handful of Piaz Piazzolla and uh, Vivaldi Four Seasons concerts and a few Sibelius concerts, you know, I, I had in the books for April, um, April, May. So yeah, it's, it's uh, it all came to a screeching halt very, very quickly. So what are you doing? Are you doing music now? Are you practicing or are you listening to music? So we are basically um, trying to make the best of this. I am, um, this is the most amount of time off I've ever had, ever. <laughs> you know? So um, I think also it, it's, it's a great time just to reflect and sort of recharge and reset and figure out what, what kind of rep that I, you know, the, the thing always has been, um, instead of doing the same, say, 20, 30 concertos all the time, you know, you always want to learn new repertoire and the struggle always was to find time to do it. So now we finally have time, you know, so uh, now you're looking through the whole sort of rep list of concertos or sonatas that I've been wanting to learn, never had the time to learn. And, you know, it's, it's, it's a good time to sort of clear the slate and start from scratch again. Wow. So anything you want to let us in on any new pieces you're working on? Well, you know what I've been doing lately? It's just, it's just for my own sort of musical well-being. I've just started um, just, just going through all the Bach sonatas and partitas again, just to, it's just cleansing, you know? It's just so pure and cleansing, and, and I do it more for me than anyone else because there are no concerts going on right now. So for now, it's, it's just, just for my own musical well-being. Right. Well, there's a great picture of Chewy on your Twitter <laughs> <laughs> with under about 13 violins. Do you know the one oh. about? <laughs> I was thinking that, that Joey must like the music too. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad he doesn't think violins are chew toys. You know? <laughs> because that would be a really, really expensive accident. <laughs> no, he's, he's really good actually with instruments, with violins and bows, and he could be right next to it and he doesn't touch them. Wow. You know, I, I, there, there's like this, this respect that goes on where he knows, okay, that's, that's something that I don't play with. <laughs> that's not food. <laughs> so now you're home for the first time in years for a long time. What kind of new things are you doing? So I am trying to be better at cooking. You know, <laughs> I'm mar marginally better than I used to be. Um, and you know what, it, it, it makes you realize how incredibly spoiled you've been on the road because, you know, every time we leave, we're always in hotels and, you know, every day we're eating out, you know, after concert, post-concert dinners and, you know, grabbing lunch outside and just, we're always eating out. So, you know, this, this whole lifestyle of, you know, jetting around the world and living in hotels, like you get very, very spoiled if you're not careful. So not once have I had to sort of learn how to cook for survival skills you know and, and all of a sudden here we are we're sheltering in place and there's no room service and <laughs> and you gotta learn how to cook so it's i mean mom is here so she's great but you know after a certain while you know we all have to sort of chip in and my brother and i um have been trying you know to to also sort of contribute in some sort of way. So my contribution is that um, I'm really good at heating stuff. <laughs> um, I, oh, I've, I've actually started making like a lot of like sushi rolls, you know, and um, my brother has sort of upped his game when it comes to instant noodles and pasta and stuff like that. So between all of us, we're, we're okay. <laughs> Oh, well, that's great. Sounds delicious. <laughs> Next time we have lunch. Next time we have lunch. Might be safer to go skydiving <laughs> than to eat my cooking. Well, that's interesting. I was just going to bring that up, that you're like a perfect person to try new things and have new adventures, because the last time we got together, I think you had just been skydiving. That's right. The last time. And I remember I was really trying to convince you to come with me. <laughs> and you held no. pretty firm. I know. No. You held pretty firm on your nose, Susan. I remember that. 
<laughs> but uh, yeah, no, it was just one of those things that's always been on my bucket list. And I think, I think part of it is that, you know, performers, we're on stage all the time and we're used to that adrenaline rush, you know, being on stage and playing for a live audience and having that excitement, you know, just sort of generate from from the hall and then you feel it from the stage and it literally tingles through your entire body and that that sort of excitement you have when you're performing and then on your free time you know, the, the whole work hard play hard sort of mantra you, you try to look for that elsewhere too so you know I've, I've grown up always you know going white water rafting and loving to go horseback riding and you know, paragliding every summer and skydiving what just seemed like the natural <laughs> progression and something that I've always wanted to do. So I, I grabbed, you know, three of my, my close friends and the four of us went skydiving and I'm so glad we got to do it before all this hit, you know? Right. Well, can you, can you take us up in the airplane with you and describe what <laughs> out of a plane? I mean, it's, it's astonishing. It's such, it's such an adrenaline rush. And there's this, this split second where, you know, your, your body fights you because there's this unnatural thing when, when somebody opens the plane, the door of the airplane while you're in the sky and someone counts down for you and says three, two, one, and then tells you to jump, you know, out of a perfectly good airplane. And there's something in you that says, maybe I shouldn't be jumping out of this plane because this plane is really nice. It's keeping me safe. But no, but I mean, you're strapped to um, an instructor who does everything. You know, the instructor does everything. He deploys the shoot at exactly the right time. So you're hurtling through the air, um, the first 60 seconds free fall, which is unbelievably exciting. And then the instructor pulls the shoot. And then just in case that doesn't work, he has an extra shoot. He has a backup, you know, so we're covered. <laughs> so, well, what uh, happened with the backup? Well, never mind. I, well, actually, I asked him that. I said, I said, so what happens if you pull the shoot, but say you, you for a minute decide to check out or just for a minute you decide to take a nap and, and you don't actually pull the shoot, then do I have to deploy the second one? What happens? And he said, um, they're all wearing these monitors, you know, a watch monitor, you know, they're, they're all strapped up. And they said, once you hit a certain altitude, the second one will deploy regardless. You know, so, you know, they, I mean, they take it seriously, you know, they monitor the weather, the winds, even if there's like a hint of winds that are you know, just slightly, you know, too strong, they'll cancel, you know, they, they, they take it seriously. They, these are professionals. So I, I'm, I'm so glad we did it. And, you know, it's, it's especially now, you know, since we're all sheltered in place and staying at home and, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm glad we got to do it before all this happened. Wow. Well, it's, I think you're fearless. Sarah, and <laughs> totally fearless. So you've been spending a lot of time with your brother. What kind of things have you been doing with him? We have finished Netflix. Basically, we have nothing more to watch now. What have you watched? Because I think it's interesting to know like, what, what, are, what kind of shows really intrigue you. We have watched everything. We went through basically all the Godfathers, first of all. <laughs> we went through all the Godfathers. Um, he made me sit through most of the Star Wars movies. I fell asleep through most of them, but like chronologically, he wanted to do all of them. Um, we've done most of the TV shows, like um, Designated Survivor, we finished. House of Cards, we finished. I had already watched Breaking Bad, but he had not, so we rewatched those. West Wing, which is, has always been an old favorite, we rewatched those. Just, it's, been, it's been a lot, and we've now watched everything that any, <laughs> any streaming company has to offer so we're we're tapped out at this point <laughs> wow so what is your favorite thing to do each day oh hands down my my daily trail walks with chewy you know we go for these massive walks usually around two hours you know where we just walk and run and explore and just you know just get away and um, it just it sort of recenters you. So my, my daily walks with, with Chewy, I'm just getting to work out, you know, I, I would always, I used to always make excuses, oh, I don't have time, there's no time for this, and now we have nothing but time. So just getting a regular routine in with working out, you know, that's, that's been fun. And um, just family time, 
things. Like I'm so grateful for the family right now. And so what new music you're looking forward to playing? You know, I, for now, because so much of what um, I've, I've been performing until now has centered around the, the big, romantic, robust sort of masterpiece concertos, you know, and for now, I'm just, I'm finding such comfort and such therapy in going back to Bach and Mozart. And it's just something that's very cleansing and really beautiful about that. So I just, I just think with what's going on right now, it just seems very fitting. Right. Well, great. Well, thank you so much for taking some time to talk to us. Thank you, Susan. I, I hope we get to go back on our dog walks with Nellie and Chewy. <laughs> and I miss our lunches. <laughs> we are, Nellie and I are both looking forward to it. Thank yeah. you so much. <laughs> thank you, Susan. Check in soon again. Yeah, absolutely. Take okay. care. Bye-bye. <laughs>